Now hereby move the motion, which is a proposed removal from office by impeachment of His Excellency Regarding His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa, EGH, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. That aware that the National Assembly on the 8th of October 2024 resolved with the support of 282 members, being at least two-thirds of all the members of the National Assembly, that pursuant to the provisions of Article 145.2, as read with Article 151 Constitution and the Standing Order 65.2 of the National Assembly Standing Orders, His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa, EGH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, be removed from office by impeachment on the grounds specified in the, spe in the special motion. Whereas by letter, reference NA stroke DLP stroke TBO stroke MTS 2024 into bracket 025, dated 8th of October 2024, and received in the office of the Speaker of the Senate on the 9th of October 2024, the Speaker of the National Assembly informed the Speaker of the Senate of the approval of the special motion by the National Assembly and further forwarded to the Speaker of the Senate documents in evidence of the proceedings of the National Assembly. Further whereas pursuant to Article 145, as read with Article 151 and 2 of the Constitution and the Standing Orders uh, 78 and 79 of the Senate, the Senate had the National Assembly on grounds for the proposed removal from office by impeachment of His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa, EGH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. And further whereas pursuant to Article 145, as read with Article 150. 1B and 2 of the Constitution and Standing Order 78 and 79 of the Senate Standing Orders. The Senate also had His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa, EGH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, on the grounds of his proposed removal from office by impeachment of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Now, therefore, pursuant to Articles 145, as read with Article 151B and 2, of the Constitution and the Standing Orders 78 and 79 of the Senate Standing Orders, the Senate resolves to remove from office by impeachment His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa, EGH, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, on the following grounds. One, gross violation of Articles 10 to A, B, and C, Article 27, 4, 73, 1 A, and 2 B, Article 75, 1 C, and 129, 2, of the Constitution and Article 147.1 as read together with Article 131.2 C and D of the Constitution. Charge 2. Gross violations of Articles 147 and 152 of the Constitution by undermining the President and the Cabinet and effective discharge of the National Government's executive mandate. Charge 3. Gross violations of Articles 6 to 10 2 A and 174 186 1 and 189.1, and the fourth schedule to the Constitution by undermining devolution. Four, gross violations of Article 161 of the Constitution on the institutional and decisional independence of judges. Five, gross violations of Article Articles 3, 1, and 145, 5A of the Constitution of, on the fidelity to the oath of office and allegiance. Charge six, Serious reasons to believe that His Excellency the Deputy President has committed crimes under Sections 13, 1A and 62 of the National Cohesion and Inter Integration Act. Charge 7. Serious reasons to believe that His Excellency the Deputy President has committed gross economic crimes under Sections 45, 1, 46, 47, 8, 3 and 48, 1 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act and Sections 2, 3, 4 and 7 of the Proceeds of Crime and Anti-Money Laundering Act. Charge 8. Serious reasons to believe that His Excellency the Deputy President has committed crimes by continuously misleading members of the public through false, malicious, divisive and insightful remarks that are contrary to the provisions of Section 132 of the Penal Code and Section 29 of the Leadership and Integrity Act. Charge 9. Gross misconduct that is incompatible with the calling and the dignified status of the office of the Deputy President and a member of the Cabinet and the National Security Council, His Excellency, the Deputy President, that has publicly attacked and undermined the work of the National Security Intelligence Services and its officers, Charge 10, gross misconduct by openly or publicly subordinating the President, who is the head of state and government, 11, gross misconduct by, by persistently bullying state and public officers.
Mr. Speaker, I have observed that uh, this is such a momentous uh, task ahead. And I never imagined a few years ago, Mr. Speaker, that it will be possible after the journey that we have traveled with His Excellency, the Deputy President, in the political side that I belong to, that hardly two years down the line, I will have the difficult task of having to move the impeachment motion against him after listening to this case brought to this House by the National Assembly in the case titled The National Assembly versus His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa. And the last two days, Mr. Speaker, together with other Kenyans, we have watched with lots of bewilderment, hard to believe pronouncements, and difficulty, Mr. Speaker, to believe that here is where we find ourselves as a nation. Despite the many challenges that we have gone through over the years, it was our hope, Mr. Speaker, that public officials would have picked up a lesson or two, especially those that are slightly older than yours truly, and many that are younger than me in this house, Mr. Speaker, and that in their conduct, they will reflect better the skills, demeanor, pronouncements of a leadership, Mr. Speaker, that this country continues to yearn for. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, listening to the case that has been brought to us by the National Assembly, I have reason to believe beyond any doubt in my mind, Mr. Speaker, that they have justified the case that they have brought before us and have been able to ably demonstrate to us and to the country, Mr. Speaker, that there is no other cure by design of our Constitution to the challenges, either political or legal or otherwise, that are being faced, Mr. Speaker, by the workings and the working relationship between the President and his deputy, other than by way of impeachment. And the National Assembly has moved this House, Mr. Speaker, on 11 charges, blow by blow, with citations and examples in broad daylight, Mr. Speaker, showing and mapping, Mr. Speaker, that each charge, how it has been committed, Mr. Speaker, and how it violates either the Constitution or various laws of the Republic of Kenya. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, we are left with very minimal options. I have observed before this House, Mr. Speaker, that the Deputy President is personally known to me. I consider him a friend. I have had the opportunity to interact with him, learn a lot from him, Mr. Speaker, listen to his wise counsel sometimes. But this evening, Mr. Speaker, duty calls. And when duty calls, Mr. Speaker, there is very little that we can do. I am afraid, Mr. Speaker, that as legislators, as servants of the people, we have to listen to what the people are telling us. Mr. Speaker, we must appreciate that in 2010, when Kenyans went to the polls and brought about change via the new constitution, it was a call for us to have a better republic than had been observed previously since 1963. And there are various high ideals, high demands that have been placed in all of us that are in leadership. And I must add quickly, Mr. Speaker, that as you rise in stature from a member of a county assembly to a member of the National Assembly, Senator, Governor, Deputy President, and eventually even as President, Mr. Speaker, that as you ascend in the hierarchy of leadership, the demands by the Constitution are even more. Number one, because you occupy greater public space, you represent more people. When you speak, Mr. Speaker, you say things that can affect, either positively or otherwise, the lives of millions of citizens. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, listening to the case that has been laid before us since yesterday by the lawyers of the National Assembly, reading through the bunch of documents that have been presented to us, 
attached with evidence, uh, Mr. Speaker. I can confirm both to this House and to the country that unfortunately this country must make the difficult decision of having to say goodbye to His Excellency, the Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa, because, Mr. Speaker, the reasons that have been listed have consequences by law.